Hey there, in this video we'll be discussing how you can create pages with dynamic routes in Next.js. Now it's not necessary that for every page that you create, its route name is predefined. There might be a case where you'd like to pass some kind of dynamic value, maybe the ID of the page itself as the URL slug when you're requesting for that particular route in the browser. Let me show you an example for that. So here I'm on the route users one and the page that I'm currently seeing is showing me the details of the user with ID one. So this slug here represents the ID of that particular user. If I change it to two, I'm taken to a different page, which is showing me the details of the user with ID two. Now we want to create pages with such dynamic routes in Next.js. So in this video, we'll be seeing exactly that. And since Next.js encourages you to statically pre-render as many pages as possible, we'll also be seeing how you can use the method get static paths to pre-render these pages with dynamic routes statically during build time. So let's get straight into it. So here we are on VS code with a starter Next.js application. Now you guys know to create a new Next.js page at a certain URL route, all we need to do is create a new file or folder under the pages section of the project. So here under pages, I'll create a new folder called users. And inside this folder, let's create an index.js, which will represent the main users route. So let's create a react functional component here. We'll call it users. And it will just return a simple message saying that this is the users route. And let's save this much changes and we'll start our development server using npm run dev. So our application is up. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like as of now. So here, if I enter the users route, I'm being taken to the main users component that is present in the index file of the users folder. Now let's go ahead and create another file inside it and notice carefully how I will be naming it. I will open square brackets, call it ID, close square brackets and give the extension JS. Now this particular way of naming files in Next.js under your pages section represents dynamic routing. So now this will enable me to render pages where I can pass an additional ID here in front of users. And this particular file will be handling all of those requests. So let's create a new react functional component here. We'll call this one user and to access the user ID that we will be passing in the address bar, let's go ahead and import use router from next router. And then all we need to do is instantiate the use router method. And I'm saving under a variable called router. And then next I can access the dynamic ID by just accessing the query object under the router. So this router object is helping me to read the route that I'm passing in the browser. And if I'm passing any query params, for example, I'm passing the ID here as the query param, I can access that from this query object. So I'm just using the destructuring syntax here to access the ID from router.query. And then in the response, this component will just return a simple message saying that details for user ID, and then we'll just render the ID that we are fetching using router. Let's save these many changes, start our development server again. And let's test if we are able to access our new dynamic route. So here this route expects one additional parameter to be passed in the URL slug. So here I'll give some ID, let's say 10. I'll hit enter and then you're seeing the message details for user ID 10. If I change this to something else, let's say 12, you'll be seeing details for user ID 12. So like this, using the bracket notation, you can define pages with dynamic routes. Now currently our page is not doing much. What we want to do is consume an API here, which will be taking in a user ID too. So if I give the user ID one, it's going to send me back the details of the user with ID one. So what we'll do is we'll take in the input from the user here, parse it, and then hit this particular API with the same user ID that we'll be passing in the URL and then render all the details for that particular user here. And for that, I'll be using server side rendering in Next.js. Now server side rendering is also called dynamic rendering. And since we are dealing with dynamic routes as of now, it makes sense to use SSR. Now in the future, we do want to make our pages statically generated. So we'll get into that in the later part of this video. But for now, just to get the ball rolling, 
we'll export an asynchronous function called get server side props from a dynamic page and call this particular API to fetch the user details. So let's go ahead and copy this. Our page is exporting a get server side props function. Hence, this function will be considered server side rendered when we run our application. So as a next step, let's go ahead and call the actual API by using the fetch method. And if you notice, I'm making a get request on this particular URL. As of now, the ID is hard coded in this URL, but we want to fetch this dynamically. Just like in a component, we were using use router to access router.query. In the get server side prop function, you can directly access it from under the params object, which will be passed as a parameter. So I'm again using destructuring to access params object. And then here in our template literal, instead of the hard coded value, I'll just say params.id. And then I'm storing the response in a variable called result. And every get server side prop function will pass the data fetched as props in its return statement. So let's go ahead and add that. So here I'll say return an object which has props with the user key having our result data. And since this is being passed as props, I can now access it using props in our component. So what I would like to do next is to render the key value pairs which is being fetched as a result of the API call. And for that, all I'm doing is running object.keys over props.user. So props.user contains our user object. And then I'm just calling map to render an unordered list of all the key value pairs. Let's go ahead and save this, run our development server again and see if we can access the user details now on the UI. So here in our browser, let's pass the ID one, see what the response is. And as you can see now, we're able to call this particular API and render the result in our dynamic page. Let's go ahead and pass some other ID, hit enter again. And then as you can see, we have successfully created a dynamic route, which is also consuming an API. But the way we achieved it was using server side rendering. Now you'll also notice this being mentioned in the official documentation that static generation is recommended over server side rendering for performance reasons. And I've also covered both static generation and server side rendering in my previous video where we discuss in detail why and when you should be using each of them and why you should try to statically generate as many next years pages as possible. So I really recommend you to watch that video. The link will be there in the description and also as a card on the top of the screen. So we've established that this is not the most optimum way of rendering our dynamic page. What we really want to do is to statically generate it during build time instead of relying on server side rendering because server side rendering is slow. And to do that next, we'll be looking at the method get static path. And using this function, we will be able to specify what all paths we want to statically generate before, during the build time. So what this basically means is generate the pages with the IDs that are already there. So for example, this particular API has IDs one to five and the details page for each of these users, just like what you're seeing right now, can be statically generated during the build time itself. So you don't need to request them and send them back as a response every single time they requested. So for that, let's export this function, get static paths from our dynamic page. So here we'll say export async function, get static paths. And within this function, we will be calling the users list API. So if you see this users list API has the users from ID one to six. So we'll call this particular API just as we were doing in our get server side props function. And instead we'll be calling this particular API here. And then what we want to do next is to store the list of user IDs in an array called paths. So what I will be doing here is I'm running the map function over the result that we're getting back from the API. And for each user, what I want to do is return an object which only has one key params and this key will be storing an object with the actual user ID. And then we'll just simply return an object which has this particular paths array and then also has another key called fallback. Now what this callback is basically doing is whenever we try to request any other ID which currently doesn't exist 
so for example the id 7 and so on do not exist in the database so every time a user will try to request them the response will be a 404 or not found and then the last chain that's remaining is to rename our get server side props function to get static props so this particular get static path function fetches the list of the ids and then this get static props function fetches the details of all the users with those ids we're done with all our changes let's save everything and start our development server again so if we go back and request for the id one just see in the response we're getting the page with the user details and then if we try to let's say request for a id that doesn't exist maybe 10 we'll get a 404 back and the important thing here is we were able to successfully statically generate all of these pages and let's do a little experiment to prove that so for that we'll build our project using npm run build then start our project using npm start and if you'll notice here we are console logging every time this particular api is hit but if you request for these pages now you'll notice that there is no log in the console and this can only be the case when your data has already been generated during build time if this page was server side rendered you would still be seeing a log in the server right now because the page would have been generated every single time so this is all that i had to discuss for this particular video i really hope this video helped you in understanding how to create pages with dynamic routes in Next.js and how you can statically generate such pages instead of falling back to server-side rendering. So hit the like button and let me know in the comments if you have any more doubts and subscribe to this channel for more such content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.